great news we're at the end of matric this is the last chapter for your whole year for the syllabus it's done and we're doing population ecology and we're going to start by just revising some terms that you already learned in grade 11 so a population is a group of the same kind of organism or a specific species that's living together in an area for example a group of zebra that's living together they are forming a population of zebra if you see the zebra walk among some um, giraffes and some spring buck or whatever all those different kinds of bucks together would make a community organisms live in an ecosystem now an ecosystem is a self-perpetuating system that consists of your abiotic and biotic factors which means the living and the non-living things together in an in an environment they dependent on one another and they influence one another the size of the population or the amount of animals that you find in that population is determined by four things immigration emigration mortality and natality natality is the birth rate or the amount of young produced in a population and the plus on the line um, basically says that the more babies that are born obviously it's going to have a positive effect it's going to increase the population size on the other side of this diagram you see mortality with a minus and mortality is the death rate which is obviously going to decrease the population size immigration is the moving into an area so immigration with a plus there says that the more animals that move into an area the greater the population size is going to become and then obviously the opposite of the opposite of that is emigration which means the amount of animals that exit an area and that's got a negative effect it's going to reduce the size of the population now obviously all these things are interdependent and there's certain swear words that uh, explains this interaction and what actually determines the survival of a population but let's look at this with an actual example so DJ over here has decided his whole school career to save up all his tuck shop money and his pocket money um, for spending after matric. And then during matric vac when other people are jawling around, DJ gets onto the internet and he googles property 24 and he finds a game farm for sale. And he jumps at the opportunity, he buys it, he's got more than enough money and this is a bargain at 13.5 million rand. And to top it all, he soma buys a few zebra as well. Um, to put on this farm of his and he ends up with a little groupie of about 30 zebra now at first everything went really well and uh, DJ could sit on his stoopy and watch his 30 zebra have babies like crazy because there's more than enough space there's more than enough food for all of them very little competition no predators and they keep having babies fantastic but about a decade later oops DJ now has like 150 zebra and they start dying off if they've run out of food the place is just not big enough for 150 zebra so very panicked he decides to phone his old buddy Zach now Zach has recently just finished all his studies and he's now an expert in environmental management and Zach immediately flies over to to DJ's farm and says listen but you need to figure out what the carrying capacity is of this farm you can just can't just put any zebra any amount on any land and think they're going to be happy so Zach goes into the field and he actually starts counting how many zebras are there now how many trees are there how much grass is there what other kind of herbivores are there and he counts and numbers and identifies every organism on that big big farm and he realizes at the end that this farm can only carry a hundred zebra so the carrying capacity is a hundred now this graph actually explains what happened on DJ's farm. He started with a very small amount of zebra. On the graph the population size is given on the y-axis and the year or the time is given at the bottom. So what happened as uh, there was lots of resources the population increased exponentially in, amount, in number and it actually overshot, it went completely over what the carrying capacity is. So because the population is so big, it's so dense, 
um, certain factors are going to limit further growth of this population. Things like uh, food, oxygen, space, f uh, shelter, mates, all of those are going to become too few for all of them to survive. So the young ones and the old ones and the injured animals, they started dying off first. Also things like diseases will spread faster amongst the population because they are so dense. And all these factors are therefore called density dependent factors. And because of this reason, Zach actually said to DJ, don't worry about this is going to sort itself out. And you can see the purple line is the number of zebra that actually naturally will then come down and go up and go down and come up and go down and oscillates around the darker line, which is the carrying capacity. So as the numbers of animals increase, pressure on the resources will occur and the environmental resistance will actually increase so much until the animals reach carrying capacity and more than density dependent factors will actually limit further growth of the population. So density dependent factors, as I said, is listed here at number four. Now note that at number five, it talks about density independent factors so regardless of the size of a population there are certain things that can hit an environment like a fire or a flood or some kind of natural disaster that will also make the population smaller regardless of how big they are like i said so if poor dj's farm had to have a, a huge fire those zebra of his will be kubai depending it doesn't it doesn't matter actually how many they were or how few they were so you might be thinking, well, how exactly did they determine? How did Zach know exactly how much of every organism there is? And this is where Amber and Jared comes in. Now, these two are very qualified, highly experienced sports enthusiasts. So here are the two of them in their helicopter doing a census of all the animals on um, Zach's farm, uh, on DJ's farm. This was one of those weird years where it actually snowed um, in the Limpopo area. I, I know it's really weird, hey? Now, the problem is that um, a census doesn't work for everything. And DJ actually has this lovely little dam on his farm as well. And he wants to invite people to come fishing. But he needs to know how many fish is in there as well. So the limitations of a census allows Jared and Amber, if they're not going to be able to fly over a dam and count how many fish there are, so what are they going to do? They'll have to use an indirect method, which means it doesn't involve actual counting. So they're going to get their fishing gear ready and they're going to go fishing. They're going to fish, catch some fish, mark them and release them. And then they're going to use this formula to estimate it's actually a calculation but it's called an estimation to determine what the population size is so on a monday morning they sit next to the little dam and they start catching fish this is the m in the formula now every fish that they catch they are going to mark that animal but in such a way that it's not harmed and it can comfortably swim around once it's put back into the dam on the Wednesday, they return. They catch fish again. If, this case, they catch some fish that's already been marked, they write this down. The C represents the total number of fish that they caught the second time. And the R is the total number of animals that they've caught in the second sample that is indeed marked. And then they can use it to figure out how many fish are in the pond. Now, the best thing is obviously to repeat this procedure the next week over two days again. A complete survey of the entire farm would obviously also um, allow Jared and Amber to use the quadrant method, which I really don't want to use because they used it in grade 12 for a research project and they are sick of it now. But that's the one that they used in Kloofendal to actually draw a grid and then count certain grids and work out the average number of animals or plants in one grid, the average. Then they would use that um, and then multiply it by the size of the whole habitat and divide it by the size of the quadrant, one quadrant on its own. So that's also an estimation. But although the, the exam paper will say it's an estimation, it's more like a calculation. So hopefully this video will be very helpful in future. 
DJ, save this for the next 10 years and then all the other future game reservers.